Hi, I'm Elisa. Hi, I'm Rick. And we live in Welch's, Oregon. We've been living tiny for just over a year, and we'd like to welcome you to our tiny homes. <laughs> well, if, if you haven't noticed already, we're very unique and independent people. And I think that's a good way to say it, right? Yeah, we got married yeah, later yeah. in life. We both have our own tastes and, right, and, right. and we're very similar in some ways, but the way we express that is very different. Yes. Rick and I met 11 years ago and got married back east in Virginia. We came out to this area of the country about seven, seven years ago and we started thinking that we wanted to buy a place. We wanted land, we wanted a home, but just as we arrived out west, the, the house prices went absolutely through the roof. So we started looking at other options and one of them was these tiny houses. We have two houses. My house is Little Starry Blue and it's 26 by eight and a half. And my house is Lassen Creek, and it is a 30 by eight and a half. We live here in the beautiful Mount Hood RV Park and Resort, and we were very fortunate to get two spaces right next to each other so that we could park our tinies and have a space in between for all kinds of fun activities. If you follow me over here, I'll take you to the center area for our houses. We built a little path that connects the houses together and so that we don't get lost when commuting. We also have a nice picnic table here in the center that we do a lot of outdoor dining on. We have some really beautiful big cedar trees here that provide lots and lots of shade. Over there on our deck is our old dog Sookie. We bought Little Starry Blue first and lived in it for about four months before the second house was completed. So why don't you come on inside and I can show you around. Welcome to Little Starry Blue. This is my tiny house. It is 26 feet by eight and a half. It has a reclaimed ceiling on it and it has heated floors. Now you're in the living room area. I love this area and it was one of my favorite parts of this house when I first saw it because it's beautiful. It's big and it's spacious and I could fit an almost full-size couch in here as well as a desk. And this area I love uh, because it made a perfect space to land. Uh, many tiny houses, you don't have a place to put your coat or your shoes when you first walk in the door. And for me, that's super important. This leads to my, uh, I, I guess I could say, this is my room of creativity. Certainly a guest can sleep up there if they wanted to, but I have it set up so that I can do all of my creative endeavors in my own space and everything is in its own space up there. So it makes a perfect place for me to go up, to meditate, to work on creative projects, uh, and sometimes just to hang out as another space. I watched all those tiny house videos of people living in like 20 foot, you know, houses as a couple and they're very young and there's, that's great because you know, when you first start off in life, you don't have a lot of things. You don't have a lot of material things. Well, we have, I have art, he has art. There were a lot of things that we had to give up obviously to live in a tiny house, but probably the bulk of it was much more than somebody younger. This way, it allows us to keep what's truly important to each of us and display that where we want it in a house. Also, because we are a little further along in our lives too, I think that many people who are our age and have been married and they have maybe a typical 2,500 square foot house, well, you know, the husband may have his man cave or something, right? And he has, he has a whole man cave, that's his house now. And I have my place to do my things, um, but my kitchen is bigger, so we still cook meals yeah. together. 
and we yeah. eat together. We sleep in my loft bedroom because he loves it. It's, it's yeah, like, a, it. like a tree house. He yeah. loves it. Yeah. But we have a big TV in his bedroom. So if we want to watch a movie together, we just go over and watch a movie. So in many ways, it's no different than living in a regular sized house. It's just two separate small residences. Well, and I think one of the funny things is so every morning I get up first. <laughs> And so I stagger downstairs, grab the coffee pot, and then have walk over and I make coffee over there. And then I stagger back up the steps and, and then start, you know, once then I start waking up and then she staggers downstairs. Yeah, it was, part, it was in our wedding vows that he has to make me coffee every morning. That was part of our vows. <laughs> that we also stay outside more often yeah. in the tiny houses. We, I think a lot of people have yeah. said that they use their outdoor space yeah. more. And because we're in such a great environment, uh, I have this porch here, he has his deck. So sometimes we come and say, oh, you know, you want a glass of wine? Okay, well, which deck are we gonna sit on? Right, and, right. and we can yeah. choose between different spaces yeah. to hang out. And yeah. that's a lot yeah. of fun, I think. Yeah. So come on, I'll show you the bathroom. So this is my tiny house bathroom. I have a great shower that I really like. It's kind of like the old Star Trek, bing me up, beam me up Scotty style of shower, but it fits perfectly in this space. I even have some area over here where I can store all my cleaning items, my towels, uh, clothes drying rack if I need it, laundry. And then on this side of the sink, I have a washer dryer combo and shelving for all my storage of all my kind of bathroom stuff. And then this sink here is a small sink, but it has really deep drawers. So you can store all your little uh, tiny knickknacks and things like that. And behind the door uh, is my essential oil collection. I am an essential oil practitioner and I needed some place to store all my essential oils that would be easy to reach and uh, organized. So the perfect place was right here in a very tiny space behind this door. Hey guys, it's Alexis with Tiny House Expedition, and I just wanted to share a quick message about the new 3D Tiny House Designer program from our friends at Tiny Easy. While you're watching this episode about Elisa and Rick's tiny homes, you're probably wondering what your own tiny house might look like and how you would customize it to make it work for you. What's awesome about the 3D Tiny House Designer is that it's the first online design tool that lets you design your tiny house on wheels without needing any technical or design knowledge. As y'all know, Christian and I built our own tiny house many years ago. We bought plans and then customized them. It was pretty tricky, but it was 100% worth it to have a custom home of our own. Man, I really wish we had the 3D Tiny House Designer back then. Simply drag and drop building blocks to design your tiny house in minutes. Then share your design with friends and even your builder. You can try it out for free and start mocking up your dream tiny house today. And if you dig the 3D Tiny House Designer, the Tiny Easy team is offering our subscribers 75% off their first month of the premium version. Use our code in the link in the description to get started today. What I really enjoy about this house is that it's an open concept and it has a lot of space to do whatever you need to do in. So this little area here we designated as my workspace. We had to buy a very specific desk. It has no legs. It bolts directly to the wall and it's pretty narrow. It's barely wide enough to sit and use a laptop, but it's perfect for me. That's exactly the way I wanted it. Uh, the footprint is very small, so it fit in here almost like it was custom built. Uh, this is our portable AC. It's a little hot today, so we have this going, but it works pretty well until it hits about 95 degrees. Then it doesn't work. Walking into the kitchen here, these stairs are open. Some people have the closed stairs, which are very common, but I really liked this open concept because it does. It makes you feel as if you have a lot more space. And underneath became the perfect area for the cat box. Coming into the kitchen more, uh, we have this counter space here is for my cat magic. This belongs to him and that's his private eating space. And then here we have open area for cooking or 
projects or whatever you need it for I try to keep this area as open as possible and over on the other side is where I have all my storage for my dishes and then obviously my stove what I asked the builder to do originally when when this house was uh, first delivered to me is that it had a full-size range and oven and I asked her to take that out so that I could have an induction cooktop as well as in a very small convection oven for heat purposes. Anything in a tiny house that generates heat is really going to make the house very, very warm. And so far this is this combination has worked well. Another thing I want to show you is that the builder put the refrigerator up on a pedestal and I use this area to store all of our pet food and anything related to pet so that when our dog, when it's time to feed our dog, I just open that, cat food is here, and then close it all up, and it's gone. Uh, another thing about this kitchen that I enjoy is uh, I asked the builder to also put in shelves that come out so that it's easy access and you're not having to slide your shoulder in all the way. Um, I also have a Lazy Susan in here that is great because it utilizes that empty space in the corner one of my favorite features actually and then finally the builder had a great uh, idea of putting in trash and recycling in one section over here so everything is contained there's no trash trash can out in the open I think the biggest thing about tiny houses is sometimes uh, builders forget to put the trash someplace <laughs> and then you have this big trash can, right? The rest of it is I have a nice deep double sink, which I really enjoy. Just a lot of space to work in. I, I believe that this kitchen is probably bigger than some of the apartments that I've lived in, the, the kitchens and the apartments. So we do a lot of uh, cooking here and my husband and I can both get in here and, and cook a meal. One of the interesting features about this house is this area here. This is actually the bottom of the top step that leads up to the bedroom loft. But this was all um, very neutral color so that many times I, I would walk right into it because I'm right at the height. So I put a, some of my art here so that it could distract me from hitting this edge. So speaking of lofts, let me take you upstairs to the master bedroom loft. So this is our master loft. It's a queen size bed. What I really liked when I first saw this loft was not only is there a landing here where I can stand up just enough to change my clothes or straighten up the bed. It's a lot easier than sliding like a snake into a master loft. But I also really liked the built-in closet that she had here. This is great hanging closet space. And she has additional shelves in the back. Then she has a whole open area here of shelving with pull-out baskets for all of your individual clothes, as well as a nice area here to put whatever you'd like to put. I, in my case, I have my Kokeshi doll collection, as well as some other things, my jewelry and things like that. And then it continues down over to the other side where again, there's more shelving. One of the best features about this uh, master bedroom loft is that there's under bed storage. The bed is on hydraulic, lifts up like this, and I can store a lot of things in here. After her dad died, we could have stayed in the house. Um, but they it was very military based um, and <laughs> it was in a subdivision and so everything was, you know, uber manicured and everything. Kind of antiseptic. Yeah, very you know. antiseptic. And, nice, but antiseptic. And so we, we kind of felt like this isn't us anymore. You know, I've done the, the suburban, you know, home life and, and living on the, the end of the cul-de-sac and everything <laughs> like that and, you know, <laughs> It's okay, but it's not exciting anymore. And, you know, for one way. And so we could have stayed and we could have done suburbia, but by then she had gotten me hooked into the tiny home videos. <laughs> um, and so that became a reality. Because of the passing, we had some extra cash that we could use to buy it. So she bought it used. It's worked out mostly really well for us. Hers was 75. 
Mine we built from scratch. Mine was 111, and with price increases, they're now advertising that for 150. Just like house prices, we've seen tiny home prices go up. Yes. Our site rent is like 650 for each of them, and then we pay like anywhere from 100 to 11 dollars, depending on what month it is for our electricity bill. Water's free, sewer's free, trash is free. Mm -hmm. It's all part and of the And they also provide uh, cable here. Yeah. Basic cable here. Yeah. But and we have max cable, so it's like 100 something per person. Yeah, internet. We yeah. pay for internet, yeah. obviously. That's the biggest expense is yeah. the internet. Yeah. But total, we're still paying less on a monthly basis oh, yeah. than, than the, what we paid for a two bedroom apartment in Washington State. Yeah, it was like 2100 way out from the cities, both cities. Yeah. So, so, so we're, at, we're at 13 here, so like all in for like 1400 1500 with with the cable so we're saving money but we're only an hour east of portland yeah hour east and of portland. we have two little towns before you get to portland sandy yeah. and gresham which have dining and shopping we also have mount hood right up the road and hood river is where the winery is so we are just surrounded by nature but we have a cosmopolitan area to, you know, especially healthcare. That's very important to me that I'm close to healthcare. One of the things that was important to us was to have outdoor living space because that really helps the value of our tiny house. So I built these decks. For Elisa's deck, I had COVID when I did it, so that was a real treat. But we made them so they would be portable. So everything is on foundations, and then it's on four by fours to give it good stability, and then it's just a deck frame on top of that. So if we need to move, we can just unassemble and put them in a U-Haul and drive off with them. So I would like to invite you into my tiny home now. I have to tell you that I really like my tiny house. It's allowed me to do a lot of personal expression. So we're gonna land here in the kitchen. Uh, I've got unfinished butcher block. Don't know if I wanna stain it or put copper on it. And so we're just playing with ideas and that's what's great about a tiny house. My tiny house comes with this wall board, which is really great because it's easy to hang pictures in it. I don't have to worry about drywall cracking, so that's highly recommended. I'm not a uh, backsplash person at all. Never done it before. We were at Lowe's, big mistake. My wife was like, well, why don't you put up backsplash? And so I watched some videos on YouTube. It actually turned out pretty good. I'm, I was really surprised. So if I can do it, you can do it. I got the black sink, which I love. The other funny thing is you'll probably notice rocks all over the place. I'm a rock person. That's what we do here. So this is this side. I've got, you know, Lazy Susan um, for great storage. I've got wine if I really need a, to get to it quickly. Standard cabinets. And then I have, I keep my trash here. Oops and my dirty clothes so all of that's in the same place and it just fits neatly right underneath the sink so on this side we have the cooktop induction that we have it's electric the other thing that i'd never done before was the door pulls that we have these are custom off etsy of course we have a variety of guests. Sometimes we use this as like a free B&B &B for our friends. So everybody likes coffee. Um, a lot of our friends are from Seattle, so that's like water to them. So we've got one Keurig and then we've got the pot. And behind me is my bathroom. So we will go in here. I have towel racks right next to the uh, shower. And one of the considerations that was very important for me, Elisa's hot water is on the outside. So we have to run a heater in winter to make sure the pipes don't freeze. It was important that I have mine inside. Then the other fun thing that um, we had, we have more colored um, door handles that match the towels. 
And then this was a fun find also off Etsy. They take a boulder and they, they cut it in half and they hollow it out. And it's a, it's a fantastic sink. I have a shower over here. It's a half, I guess you call them half round showers. And it's fantastic because I have a huge propane tank outside. That allows me to take unlimited hot water showers. That also feeds the shower outside so that we can have hot water or cold water as we need. On the other side of the house, I have our living area. These three windows are great. I can open them up or close them as I need to and um, adjust the light coming in and out. I can create a variety of moods or feelings just with the amount of light that I bring in. And then if it's like a really bad day, I can just close the blinds and I'm fine. <laughs> so. One of the things that happens in Oregon, where we live, is it rains a lot. So we really need to keep jackets handy because you never know whether it's going to be cold rain or a drizzle. So you have to have a variety of everything. Uh, Lisa got me these really great trones from um, Ikea. And so I just throw my shoes in here and it keeps them off the floor and I don't trip over them. So I have knickknacks all over. One of the things that was really important for me because I work remote was having my own office. So this is something that normally they make a 26 foot and I got a 30 foot and what I did with that four feet was to put a four foot office in. So I can sit down, play the stereo. All I do is I just bring one of the laptops in that I need to and then just sit here and, and it's a perfect height for me. So when we got this tiny house, one of the things that it had was just an empty room. They didn't give us a bed or anything, which is actually great because we could sit back and say, what do we need? We need more storage. We need a bed. The need for the storage outweighed the need to have the bed at um, floor level. And so what I do is I created a concept where I raised the bed to a, to a half wall platform and then I went on Etsy and found these bookcases and had them shipped. And that became the foundation. So I put them all together and screwed them together and then bolted them into the wall so they wouldn't shift. If you haven't noticed, I'm a little of a larger guy. So I really need things to be stable and secure, um, not creak and things like that. And then underneath, I have all this great lighting um, that I installed. And um, it's got our books and our wine and toolkits and everything that we need. So if you'll notice, I have chains on the wall. Um, don't get excited. It's not what you think. I created the stairs, but I wanted storage under the stairs as well. And so I have a hook on the bottom of the uh, stairs that I created. And then so this whole thing lifts up and then we just attach this. So we have suitcases and pillows and also paper stuff that we don't need to get to very often. And I think yeah. this last two years, if it's taught us anything, is that life can change very quickly. Yeah. And that was, I think, another reason why we went tiny is because we don't know what our future is, really. I mean, you know, family members have passed away. We've moved to a different state. I mean, all in literally less than two years. We would like the ability to, if we decide to leave this area, to take our houses with us. And you can't do that with a stationary home. You know, eventually we would like to settle down, sure, but we might have some more adventures coming our way where we could take our houses with us and enjoy those new places. And, and one of my hobbies is to experience new things. And so the tiny house really just nails that because I can always pick up, like, let's say we want to go to Hawaii, you know, well, you can roll it on the boat and, and take it over. And, We're thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Who knows, but Who I knows know, where we'll we end up. Yeah. <laughs> but it opens up yeah. different possibilities. Yeah. Possibilities that didn't even occur to us before are stuff that we can think about now and you know maybe we won't do it but it's the fact that wow well there could be a way that we could figure out a way to do it who knows right we so have we have options 
And if things change, well, we can always go back to living, you know, more traditional way. But for right now, we, we said we would give it a year, right? In the beginning, yeah. we said, okay, we'll give it a year. And now we're fully committed. And now we're fully <laughs> committed. A year has come and gone, and we're like, right. uh -oh. well. Why would we do anything different? Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of the, the feel. Yeah. It goes to doing things like do yourself true. You know, what, what works for you? And so it's a blank canvas and you can do it any way that you want to, you know, within a house. And if you have to have a mortgage on it, that's okay. It's not like it's gonna it's be a, a $400,000 house mortgage. Yes. And so for us, it's like, we would rather travel with the money than have a big piece of real estate that's cold and impersonal in suburbia. And I, that sounds jaded a little <laughs> bit, but it's really, I've kind of, crossed over the fence and the road and said, you know, I don't, for me, I don't ever want to go back. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.